All right, all right, all right. This video is going to be covering something I've wanted to cover for a while. How well does macOS Catalina run on an unsupported uh, Mac? In this case, I've got a 2011 MacBook Air. It's pretty much the base specs. I mean, it's got a 1.7 gigahertz processor, four gigabytes of RAM, and a really outdated HD 3000 integrated GPU. Now, everything I've heard would lead me to believe that this isn't going to be a good experience. I've never actually run Catalina on this uh, MacBook at all, so I figured it'd be an interesting experiment. I'm also going to compare and contrast how it works on an unsupported Mac to uh, my 2014 MacBook Air, which actually has uh, the HD 6000 integrated graphics and it supports Catalina uh, natively. And a little bit of this uh, you know, reason for doing this video was seeing how uh, Big Sur is being released and Apple is going to be switching over to ARM chips got me thinking, well, I should probably see if some of my older machines can run a later operating system because the writing really is on the wall. I'm going to go ahead and guess that the next operating system after Big Sur may not even support the 2014 uh, MacBooks. And, and uh, yeah, we're going to start to see the architectural changes of the CPU actually remove uh, the support for the older Macs much faster. So this is going to be a fun experiment to see if I can go from High Sierra to Catalina on an unsupported Mac, and then I'll do a little bit of research along the way and see what other machines will or will not work with uh, Catalina. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So to start things out, go out to DOS Dude's site, so dosdude1.com, snag the Catalina patcher tell it to actually download Catalina if you don't already have a copy. And while it's downloading, what I did is I played around, right? I, I just sort of messed with the computer within High Sierra, its last supported operating system, and just felt, you know, what was the experience like? Maps, um, just the navigation, uh, multitasking. You know, I've had this computer for a while, um, and I used to use it a lot more. And just sort of going back to it, you know, I like the form factor. What can I say? I actually like the form factor better than the 11.6 inch. I understand why that one's gone, <laughs> why they no longer make those anymore. Um, it just, it, that one was a little too small. The, the 13 just feels perfect size and it's lightweight. Uh, I'm actually still impressed at its performance, even though it's so old. Um, and yeah, so, so my impression right off the bat was, yeah, I understand why I haven't upgraded from High Sierra. Now, after I got the file all downloaded, I went ahead and ran through the actual upgrade process. And the upgrade process is fairly straightforward. Now just read the instructions on the DOS2 site. Uh, I've got other videos if you want to see that in more detail. Okay, so I haven't actually used it yet. Just left it on the login screen so I could have an initial impression here of how it's gonna run or how it's running. So let's go ahead and log in, check it out. So nothing, nothing crazy yet. Let's see, pointer control, um, trackpad options, enable dragging, three finger drag, greatest change ever. Let's go back now, find the trackpad, turn on tap. Oh, it's already on. Okay, so now I can three finger drag and tap to click to close that, cool. All right, let's go ahead and jump over to Safari, go out to news.google.com. Okay, so quick impression is I can't tell, uh, I mean, what, I, I heard that, you know, the, the graphics performance is supposed to be more sluggish, but in High Sierra, I mean, the HD 3000, it's never been a quick uh, sort of integrated GPU, but I'm seeing here, seems almost smoother. I mean, scrolling smooth, Safari is smooth. Um, let's open up a couple apps, sort of see how those play out. I mean, is, is it like, okay, the transparency's turned off? Maybe, I mean, maybe that's what's going on here. There's a little bit of a graphical issue here at the corner of this window. As it hovers over the other window, you can sort of see it there. So the little corner is missing. And maybe there's some transparency turned off, but it actually feels like with, the, with these changes that have maybe turned off some of the graphical settings, it might actually be helping the HD 3000 perform better. So I'm wondering if going back into High Sierra and trying to turn off some of those graphical settings would actually help it perform better as well on this outdated MacBook Air. 
cool, use my current location, whatever. Track me, sell me ads, great. Um, overall, my initial reaction is what, it's working just fine. Does it look as cool? I, you know, here's the thing. Um, I can spot a couple little differences of maybe lower transparency, or like I said, the corner of that specific window looking a little bit off, but um, <laughs> if I gave this to somebody else in my house and asked them uh, what they thought, they would have absolutely no clue if there was anything different here. All right, so after the initial exploration, I continued using the machine and decided to also test it out with the Haven benchmark. Why not, right? Um, now, it wasn't performing that great. You can see on the left here is the 2011 MacBook Air, which has the HD 3000 in it. And it's only got 384 megabytes of RAM or something like that. And then on the right is the 2014 11.6 uh, inch MacBook Air, and it has the HD 6000 in it. Now, I was averaging anywhere from 7 to 15 uh, frames per second on the, the 2011 MacBook Air, right? So the older device is running slower. Shocking, right? And around 30 to 40 on the 2014 MacBook Air. But then I noticed something. I looked a little bit closer, and the GPU was running at like 100 degrees Celsius. And I was like, oh, geez, this, what is going on here? Like, that can't be right. Um, yeah, so... Apparently, at some point, I'd knocked the fan cable loose, so it was absolutely running at zero. I opened it up, replaced it, and ran everything again, and the frame rates were much more stable this time. It didn't, I mean, it didn't improve it a ton, but it took it from, on average, around eight or nine frames per second up to, you know, 13 to 16, um, which was just, it was a lot smoother. So essentially, the 2014 is not 400% better. It's about 100% better uh, in this benchmarking scenario, that is. So, you know, it, it actually still performed quite well, in my opinion, for being such an old machine. And I can't tell if that's, you know, hey, wow, um, it's holding up really well, or this really just sort of shows the lack of advancement from Intel's integrated GPUs. Conclusion time. So, I actually had a much better experience with this MacBook Air than I expected. I thought I was gonna have a lot of little issues and really what I ran into was a, maybe even a better experience than what I had on High Sierra, which is confusing, but I think it's because the graphical quality has been turned down. Now, I didn't actually care or notice that maybe translucency was modified a little bit. I didn't notice it, right? Uh, but all of the out-of-the-box apps worked just fine for me. So that's the first big conclusion I can put out there is that I'm gonna actually keep this machine on Catalina. I've noticed no interruptions to my workflow. I was still able to do everything that I normally do during the day. Now, what is bad about the experience? Well, uh, not a ton, honestly. I think most of the bad experiences that I had were actually due to the machine just being an older machine um, and only having a dual core in it. So I will say that I wouldn't necessarily recommend going out and getting a MacBook Air uh, as a primary machine, but it's great for, hey, I'm gonna go uh, on vacation, snag the lighter, smaller machine for a web browsing experience. Then again, you may wanna just keep it at home if you're trying to vacation. Uh, now, what else was good or bad? Well, something that I learned along the way is that the machines that have the dedicated GPU within the same time frame, the 2011 MacBook Pros, the 15 inch, you actually have to disable the dedicated graphics, which seems backwards, that the dedicated graphics will actually slow down the Catalina experience. So that was what I had initially been hearing about. The bad experience that people are having here is that the, I think it's the uh, mobile um, version of the 6750 or, or 6550M that's in those 2011 MacBook Pros. Uh, it actually needs to be disabled uh, and you have to rely on the HD 3000 because the HD 3000 built-in uh, uh, integrated graphics actually has drivers within the DOS dude patcher, okay? Now, that would probably bring us to the final piece of sort of maybe negative or positive, depends on how you look at it. The DOS dude patcher does turn off system integrity protection. It does inject uh, drivers from older versions of uh, Mac OS into the operating system, into Catalina, so that you gain support and functionality. 
Now, some people may look at this and say, I, I, I don't want to turn off system integrity protection because it does check files for you. But, uh, you know, hey, there's going to be risks with everything. Um, and uh, a lot of people have been using the DOS dude patcher and it seems like, well, it just works. So uh, I'm not going to, you know, necessarily use a DOS dude patched machine as my primary machine, but as a secondary, absolutely. Um, so I think that's really the conclusion that we can draw here. If you have an older Mac and it is on the list of supported machines for Catalina, why not? Give it a try. Install it on a secondary hard drive if you need to. But give it a try. My experience was much better than I was expecting. And yeah, I'm going to go ahead and keep running it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Um, let me know in the comments, of course. And like, subscribe if you, if you could. Um, hey. It helps everybody, it helps every content creator know that they're doing the right thing. Till the next time.